Your New Year's resolution was to learn Spanish, but here we are in the middle of February and you've kind of, sort of, definitely dropped off. If you're starting to hate this whole language learning thing, don't worry, I've been there. After this video, you'll have my top tips for how to fall in love with learning Spanish. For the best advice about moving to Mexico, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I upload a new episode every Thursday. If you're new to my channel, welcome, and if you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alex, and I moved to Mexico from the US in 2017. I've called Querétaro home ever since. In honor of Dia de San Valentin, Valentine's Day, I'm sharing my top tips for how to fall in love with learning Spanish. Wait for it, as an adult. Here on my channel, I share lots of information about moving to Mexico. But when my subscribers ask me for my best piece of advice, here's what I tell them. Learn as much Spanish as possible before you move to Mexico. From finding an apartment to navigating the residency process, your Spanish is going to be put to the test right off the bat, and you'll be really glad you didn't wait until you got here to start learning. The majority of my audience is based in the US, and most people in the US only speak one language, English. In fact, according to the US Census Bureau, only 20% of Americans can converse in two or more languages. Compare that to 56% of Europeans. Please don't think that I'm saying that to shame you. I'm referencing those statistics to let you know that I understand why you're having such a hard time learning Spanish. There's a block. As an adult who's never learned another language, you're not sure if it's actually possible. But I'm here to tell you that it is possible. I didn't start taking learning Spanish seriously until I was 22 years old. And hoy tengo un nivel donde me siento cómoda en cualquier situación que me encuentre. The first step is discovering how to fall in love with learning Spanish. But before we dive into my five tips, I'm gonna take this wig off so we're not all distracted. Think for a second about the last person you dated. If they were difficult and stressed you out, I'm gonna go ahead and guess that you broke things off. But if it was enjoyable to spend time together and the relationship felt natural, there's a good chance that you developed feelings. If you wanna fall in love with learning Spanish, it needs to be enjoyable and feel natural. The best way to do that is to make studying simple. If you've watched other videos with tips for learning Spanish, you've probably heard the one about watching shows and movies in Spanish. But let's face it, at the end of a long day, you just want to veg out in front of the TV and not struggle through a show. Here's my alternative. For whatever you're watching, go ahead and leave it in English, but turn the subtitles on in Spanish. You will seriously be amazed at how much new vocabulary you pick up. Plus, this is a great strategy for helping you grasp sentence structure. When you do decide you're ready to watch something in Spanish, keep in mind that you don't need to understand absolutely everything in order for it to be beneficial. Personally, I love using studying as an excuse to rewatch some of my favorite shows. It's easier for me to follow along because I'm already so familiar with it. The same goes for reading. The first books I read in Spanish were from the Harry Potter series. When you're learning Spanish, don't feel like you need to read Don Quixote. Children's books are a great place to start. No, that's not a kinky Valentine's Day thing. Although if you're into that, more power to you. Be a baby is to remind you that you already have experience learning a language. When learning Spanish feels impossible, think back on how you learned English. If you were like pretty much every baby ever, then you learned by repeating everything that you heard. When Taylor and I watch Casa de Papel, we are constantly pausing the show to repeat lines from Nairobi, Denver, and the other characters. Since we lived in Madrid, it's really fun for us to try to imitate Spanish accents. If you're looking for a native speaker from Mexico to imitate, I recommend the Learn Spanish and Go podcast. Mai has a really lovely and really easy to understand Mexican accent. 
In one of my favorite episodes, she and co-host Jim talk about Mexican slang, which is perfect for practicing this be a baby strategy. I will link that podcast in the description below. I didn't start to really truly fall in love with Spanish until I got the heck out of my shell and started using it to have real conversations. My favorite resource for finding real people to have real conversations with is italki. I've used the platform to find affordable one-to-one -one language classes as well as connect with other language learners for intercambios. An intercambio is a 50-50 language exchange. So for example, you will find a partner on italki and set up a time to via Skype chat for first 30 minutes in one language and then 30 minutes in another language. The person that you're talking with is trying to learn English and in exchange, they are helping you practice your Spanish. If having a full on conversation via Skype sounds too intimidating at this point, don't worry. You can also find someone who is willing to exchange WhatsApp messages or voice messages, and that's a great way to build up confidence. If you are interested in learning more about learning a language with italki, then I will leave a link in the description for a blog post that tells you everything you need to know. Whether you use italki to find a language partner or a tutor, it's important to spend the time to find someone that you truly vibe with. For a language partner, that means someone who is interested in discussing the same topics as you. And for a language tutor, that means a teacher who is going to push you, but is also someone that you feel comfortable with. Don't be afraid to try out some different teachers until you find someone who matches your learning style. Have you started having real conversations yet? Where are you on your journey with Spanish? Let me know in the comments. Every romantic can identify with the search for the one. I spent years searching for the one program, teacher, app that was gonna show me how to master Spanish. And in the end, it nearly broke my heart because the truth is the one doesn't exist. Showing up for your one Spanish class a week isn't enough. And listening to Rosetta Stone on your commute to work isn't enough. Duolingo alone isn't enough. Instead of looking for a silver bullet, you need a combination of resources and strategies. If you're going to fall in love with learning Spanish, your self-made immersion program needs to have ways to practice your reading, writing, listening, and speaking skills with things that genuinely interest you. Taylor, my partner, fell in love with Spanish while listening to rap. He would listen to raperos and raperas from Spain, Venezuela, and Mexico. And he loved their lyrics, their flow so much that he wanted to know what they were saying. Even if Bad Bunny's music isn't your thing, use this same idea to create your own immersion program. Find mediums and materials that light your fire. If learning Spanish were dating, not every worthy achievement is a surprise hot air balloon ride. If you're going to fall in love with learning Spanish, you need to learn to appreciate the smaller, quieter, less Instagram worthy wins. Some people, always people who have never tried to learn another language, think it's either you know nothing or you're speaking at a native level. When in reality, fluency is a spectrum and no one's language learning journey is linear. For a long time, I didn't celebrate small wins. I was in this weird headspace where I decided that I was just going to wait to start speaking Spanish until I was sure that I wasn't going to make any mistakes. As you can probably guess, paralyzed by my fear, I plateaued my own progress. Trying and failing, making mistakes, it's all part of the process. And that's scary, I get it. No one likes to be wrong. But fluency isn't about being perfect. You're putting a lot of pressure on yourself if you're trying to pass as a native speaker. And while that's a great, that's an awesome big picture long-term goal, you need to remember that right now it's enough just to be understood. Imperfect progress is still progress. And you need to keep in mind that learning Spanish is a marathon, 
not a sprint. So even spending five minutes every day studying is better than one hour once a week. Don't forget to celebrate the small wins and be wary of burnout. Falling in love with Spanish doesn't happen all at once. It's a gradual thing. Those were my five tips to help you fall in love with learning Spanish as an adult. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you. Learning Spanish is hands down one of the hardest things I have ever done, but it's also one of the most rewarding, which is why I wanna say to you, keep going. You've got this. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you have any tips of your own for learning Spanish, be sure to leave those in the comments. Our language learning journeys are never over, so I am always looking for new resources and new tools to improve my own Spanish skills. I'm Alex from backpackingbrunette.com. Happy Valentine's Day, and thanks for watching.